Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, our latest in our series of Solutions for Success series. Uh, it's Jonathan Hamilton, the president of Point Alliance, and today's session will be done by one of our Office 365 and Microsoft Solution Architects, Dennis. Uh, he will be walking us through creating forms for SharePoint Online, but it's so much more than that, right, Dennis? It will be different options uh, for doing forms within Office 365, which includes SharePoint Online and some of the other tools. So uh, we will not wait any longer because there's a lot of material to cram within the next 30 minutes and uh, and hopefully Dennis gives you some insight and uh, whets your appetite in one of these areas to uh, to be asking questions and looking for more information and we would just ask that you hold your questions until the end. So without further ado, Dennis, it's all yours. Just wanted to make sure everyone can see my screen. Um, hello. So uh, today we will, we will spend about 30 minutes discussing four possible options for creating forms for SharePoint Online. Um, I'm Dennis Molotov, and I've been working with uh, SharePoint for the last 10 years, and I work for Point Alliance as a SharePoint uh, architect, and I love building custom forms for SharePoint. Um, from a very high perspective, um, any enterprise SharePoint solution can be built using just two UI elements. The first one is just the list form that is a list of entities. It's also known as a grid view or a table. And the second item is an item form. And we're going to explore a few options how to create these two items. So we are not going to cover um, creating custom forms using SharePoint Designer because it's not considered the best practice for the last four or five years anyway. Uh, we are not touching on out-of-the-box forms augmented with custom JavaScript and CSS styles. And we are not going to talk about InfoPath. Uh, Microsoft has deprecated this tool. It still works, but it's not the best and recommended solution going forward with Microsoft. Uh, we are going to be talking about uh, Power Apps, an index form for Office 365, uh, custom forms using modern frameworks, um, Microsoft Forms, and uh, we, we will end with the licensing cost of all of it. And by the end of the presentation, I will share the links to the resources I'm going to talk about. Um, for the demonstration, I have created a number of subsites where I have created test uh, courses list that has already data pre-populated, and it's going to be our guinea pig for all our forms. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's an out-of-the-box uh, modern list. I can also cha change it back to the classic view so that you can recognize what it is. As you know, this is an item form. And this is a list form. So let's see what we can do with that using Power Apps. I can click on an item here. Then I can click Customize. That will create on the fly an entire Power App for me with a single screen for item, item form. It usually takes a few seconds, and by the end, of this process, I will have a form that consists of all fields that I I need to care about in the in the list. I can add and remove a few of them, and if I am satisfied with the way it looks, I can save it. And publish to SharePoint. Let's see how it looks now. Um, this is now an entire Power App generated. I can switch to edit mode, and uh, there you go. That's our Power App. Why would I want a 
custom app for an item form. The reason is that out-of-the-box SharePoint forms are not dynamic, meaning they do not show or hide, enable or disable any fields based on the role or the missions or stage of the workflow. So Power Apps lets us do that. So we have just created an item form. What about the the second element, the least form? Let's do let's create a Power App that covers that as well. We're going to click Power Apps again and click on Create an App. Give it a name. Um, in this case, we are creating an app with three screens instead of one. Um, one edit item form, one view item form, and the entire list form. As you can see, um, we have three forms, or <clears throat> in Power Apps terminology, screens created for us. If we don't like something, we can modify it right here using mouse. We can add or remove tails, rename things, add and remove buttons, add integrations with uh, uh, Microsoft Flow or workflows or Twitter or any other connectors that are available for Power Apps. Uh, we can also click on Preview to see the results. This is live. Even though it's not published, I can interact with the data right away. Um, <clears throat> and um, if I'm satisfied with the way it looks, I can also publish it. And after it's published, it's not visible by anyone in the company. However, I can select the people that are supposed to interact with this app. For example, I can um, share this app with Ruby. Now, Ruby will be able to use her mobile phone to open this uh, Power App, or you can see the same Power App in a uh, in a browser on your desktop. One of the drawbacks of this approach, I should mention, is that if you create a Power App using this ribbon, it will create a um, mobile phone friendly app, which will not necessarily look good on your desktop because it will only occupy a small area, maybe this big. Uh, if you want to create a proper Power App, you should probably do it a different way by creating a Power App from scratch. I have uh, prepared a few demonstrations here. Let's click on, for example, Request to Leave. <clears throat> That's a full screen app that allows me to request um, time off. You can say I'm going to have a vacation from this to that date. Add a comment and a title, click Next, and submit the request. Power apps are very powerful. Um, it is really easy to create UI elements. Um, however, it needs to be mentioned that creating complex and advanced Power Apps is um, it's not very easy to do. You've got to learn a lot of peculiarities of Power Apps. Power Apps does not allow you to add custom JavaScript or CSS styles. It only allows you to use the built-in JavaScript functions. The good thing is that Power Apps has hundreds of them for anything you possibly could want. So this is about it about Power Apps. I need to mention that all demonstrations about Power Apps today you've seen are free. You don't need a separate license for that. There are several tiers that are more expensive. For example, you could uh, 
by plan 102 that allows you to install a gateway that will connect to your on-premises um, database. Um, I also need to mention that Power Apps only works with the cloud version of SharePoint. So it is not hosted on your on-premises. It's not something that you install on your uh, enterprise servers. I need to mention that Power Apps supports multiple languages, but it's very manual. Every control or label you'll see will have to use a formula to retrieving, for retrieving the resource um, translation before displaying it. So it's a bit tricky to do, but it's possible. Um, licensing can be very confusing. It will probably take you a few hours to, um, to realize what it is all about. So if you have any questions about that, I can help you with that. Um, so that's about it about Power Apps. Let's move to the option number two. And that would be Nintex. Nintex is a very popular solution and uh, arguably one of the best in its um, kind. Um, it is very user friendly and powerful at the same time. Um, I have lots of experience developing uh, Nintex forms for on premises. A SharePoint online version of Nintex forms is uh, about the same, but it's it's in my opinion is a bit of a trimmed down version. The reason I say that that Nintex online doesn't have a solution for creating lists, and this is a big drawback but at the same time, not a big deal because majority of SharePoint solutions can be created without um, the need to create a custom list form because out of the box ones are pretty good already. So as you can see, that's the same courses list that I've prepared. Let's customize it with Nintex. I'm using a separate uh, Office 365 tenant with um, Nintex application installed. It's a 30 days uh, trial. You can request it yourself to try it out. Let's create a responsive form. And just like Power Apps, it created an entire for form for me right away. I can drag and drop fields to rearrange them to look exactly how I want. I can rename them. To, to say whatever I want. Um, if I need to hide and show anything here, just like in Power Apps, I can use formulas for that. If I go to more settings and then go to appearance and say visible, I can say yes, it's visible or no, it is not visible. But that's not very powerful, is it? If I go to expression, I can start writing formulas where I can say it is visible if the state of the workflow is such and such, or your permission is such and such, or your uh, manager's department is this. So that is very powerful and very user-friendly at the same time. Um, Nintex Forms probably has one single drawback, is, and it's the price. The reason I show Nintex Forms is that it's probably the best forms tool the money can get for you. but the price tag is something that you need to be aware of. Um, so let's um, save it. And publish. So now instead seeing an out of the box form, I see an, an index form generated app. It should be responsive and it should look good on a Nintex forms mobile application that should be included with the solution. So let's move to the next option, which is modern, modern frameworks. Hmm. 
This is the same courses list, but yet uh, on another website. It's SharePoint 2013 website, but as uh, you could see, the same solution, the same list can exist anywhere. And modern frameworks are great because they work anywhere um, in SharePoint 2013, 16, SharePoint Online, and I'm pretty sure it will seamlessly work with SharePoint 2019 when it comes, comes out this year. Um, so let's see how, what we can do about this. Um, about two years ago, I've created a GitHub project that allowed me to quickly generate Angular forms on the fly. And uh, if you go to this page and download a zip archive, um, it will, I've already done it. So let's see what it does. So that package allows me to create a modern AngularJS form for any list I want on the fly. I'm going to demonstrate how it works right now. I'm going to double click it. Enter the list uh, beside URL, my account. And I need to provide the core, uh, the list name, which is courses, the same one we used in previous examples. Um, and in a few seconds, the entire form will be generated. So there you go. It's our Angular JS form. It has um, most of the fields that you might possibly know or need. If you need something else, you can add more. And um, the potential problem with modern forms is that you need to know modern frameworks. And for AngularJS in particular, you might need about 40 to 60 hours of uh, learning before you can work with it. But the experience is quite great while you, um, once you get a hand of it. For example, if I want to modify something on this form, for example, um, add some text after courses, I can go to Visual Studio Code and say, hello, hello audience. And if I refresh the page, I'll see this. I can modify the list of fields here. Um, I'm not going to go too, too deep into this, but that's the development process you get. You can add it to source control, as you can see, the files are not um, located in SharePoint or SharePoint Designer directly. It, um, the entire solution lives on, on my disk, which is the best practice nowadays. Um, so that solution allowed me to create an item form. It doesn't show an example of a list form yet, but I can show you another example right now. This is another example where I have a list form and an item form all in one place. Um, in this example, I'm using Angular JS and uh, Angular Material Directives. Um, the development process also looks very similar because it's also the same uh, stack of technologies. For example, if I want to display instead of this list another list called comments, it's a list that I've already prepared for you today as well. If I refresh the page, I'll see a completely different list. I can increase number of pages per, per page, uh, per items per page, just like that. Or I can also display two, two lists instead of one. And this is just to show you that solutions that we create are reusable and can be moved for basically any project we work on. And uh, this is something that you need to be aware of when you create a, your first modern framework form uh, that will take you a long time, but as time goes on, 
creating new projects and new forms will be extremely fast and easy because you are basically reusing what you've already done in the past. Um, so as you can see, it has two elements I was talking about, the list and um, form, and uh, a list item form. That's a second example. I have a lot more, but I want to show you the latest thing that I've been working on for a few uh, weeks. Um, this um, modern framework is Angular JS with um, Office UI fabric. It is a little bit more advanced, but as I mentioned before, it also consists from the same elements. For example, um, that is good old item form, and this is a list list form. It just combines to um, to work in a single page application, just like that. As you can see, it uh, looks and feel, feels pretty good, and uh, it's also responsive and will work pretty well on a mobile device. The same solution can be installed both on SharePoint Online and on premises. Uh, let me prove that to you. This is SharePoint on premises 2013, and this is SharePoint Online. And as you can see, there is really no difference. It will work anywhere. I cannot I cannot say the same about Nintex forms or Power Apps because Nintex forms for on premises and SharePoint online index forms are two completely different projects and they are incompatible. Uh, ShareGate has some solutions for migrating uh, Nintex, but it is a very hard job to do. It, that migration will no, will, won't be seamless by any, any means. The same goes about Power Apps. Power Apps doesn't really exist for your SharePoint on-premises farm. So if you're going to look into migrating to the cloud, um, Power Apps is not an option for you. So Modern Frameworks is something that is a great choice if you're still stuck with SharePoint on-premises. Um, you could choose theoretically to develop uh, SharePoint.net full trust solutions um, using web parts, and I've built a lot of these in the last several years. But that is not considered the best uh, approach anyway, because uh, modern stack development is much, much faster than uh, farm solutions. One of the reasons is that you can easily deploy things hundreds of times a day instead of planning a deployment every three or four months and uh, asking people for a maintenance windows and uh, things like that. I can also easily promote and deploy solutions right from my Visual Studio or from PowerShell to any any environment. I can say, uh, please please deploy my solution to SharePoint Online or to SharePoint on-premises and the URL is such and such and it will seamlessly deploy everything that I've developed. A lot, more, a lot easier and uh, better and cleaner than creating SharePoint uh, full trust solutions. Um, so that will bring us also to the next and last way of creating SharePoint Online forms. And that would be Microsoft Forms. I, at first, was a bit hesitant about even mentioning that. This is because Microsoft Forms is really a solution for creating surveys. surveys quizzes, polls, and collecting feedback. Uh, Microsoft Forms is a very misleading uh, brand name. It assumes that you can create uh, lists and uh, forms, but it's not powerful and versatile enough to create almost any enterprise-grade solution. So um, Microsoft Forms can integrate with workflow solutions like Microsoft Flow. Um, but it doesn't make it very versatile. So basically, if you need to create a survey or a quiz or a poll or a feedback, then by all means, use 
forms, but in my personal experience, for almost anything apart from that, it is virtually unusable. And it needs to be mentioned that uh, forms only exist in SharePoint Online in Office 365. And it's free. It's a good option. It looks good. There is also Forms um, mobile application that also looks very good. But you need to, to be aware that it exists, but you also need to know that it's uh, very limited in uh, its functionality. And um, because I need to leave some time for the questions, I will quickly move to the very last um, part, which is pricing. Oh, there you go. Uh, every example you saw today with Power Apps it can be done using free license, Office 365 uh, license. It's included in E1, E3, E5 dynamics and so on. Um, if you need to connect to your on-premises resources, you need a plan one or plan two. Uh, plan one and, and plan two is more enterprise grade um, license that will allow you to uh, separate staging from production, for example, and create multiple environments and multiple data sources that will be shared by a single or multiple uh, power apps. So this is more appealing to me, but unfortunately the, the free solutions are very appealing for most of the clients and that's where the majority of apps are created nowadays. In index forms, have a different license. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention that that's the price per user per month. That's 10 users per, per month. Um, so, I, <clears throat> for example, 100 users per year will cost you about 10,000 uh, Canadian dollars with, with plan one and about 60,000 Canadian dollars with uh, plan two. It, I need to mention that plan two is not really meant to be um, like you, typically it's enough to buy three or four licenses with plan two and the rest will be plan one. Again, licensing with Power Apps is a bit confusing. I'm not going to go in too deep into it. If you have some questions about that, I can answer it after the presentation. The index forms for uh, Office 365 licensing is um, very easy, but also very um, hard to, it's not flexible, let's say. The cheapest license you can get will allow you to create 25 forms, and it will the cheapest will be about 10,000 Canadian dollars. And uh, next license would be 100 forms, and it will cost you $33,000. There is also an enterprise uh, license that is um, that has a lot more services and, and for example a Nintex uh, app that can be created um, from scratch for you on the fly. That's something that's also very appealing but will cost you um, about this much. So even if you create something quickly with Nintex, you will end up paying the licensing costs every year. So you need to be aware of this as well. Of course for it also applies to Power Apps. As per modern frameworks, Everything that I uh, you, you saw today is completely free. Uh, I do recommend Telerik Kendo UI controls if you need to develop very complex uh, UI elements like reads, um, like this one, for example. That is something that is really easy to do with Kendo UI and hard to create from scratch. And that would cost you um, about this much for per developer. We in Point Alliance have a license so that so that we can create uh, custom solutions using Telerik and the UI, and clients will not be charged for that. Um, Microsoft Forms are free, and uh, as far as I know, there are there is no paid version for Microsoft Forms, and it's pretty much included in most uh, Office 365 um, subscription plans. So if you if you have any questions, um, I can answer them now.
so we have a big question uh, how to handle conversion of existing forms well it depends on which forms you already have i suppose you have out of the box sharepoint forms then you just choose one of these solutions and uh, you create them from scratch if you've created for example nintex work uh, forms then you either i would just recommend recreating them you can theoretically use um, share gate migration tool that would be very useful if you have hundreds and hundreds of forms that will not migrate you seamlessly so you will end up having forms that are maybe 80 percent functional so after migration you'll just have to repair them which is much better than recreating them from scratch but share gate um, tool for nintex migration will cost you additional um, money and I guess it depends on whether the question is about the form itself or the data within the forms, because there would be other migration tools as well to migrate yeah. the data between platforms, depending on what you're coming from and going to. So there'd be the two different aspects. For, if, for example, Power Apps, they, they don't exist on premises, so you cannot migrate it to, to the cloud. Um, so you would just migrate data itself in a list and then create a Power App on top of that. Uh, for modern frameworks, migration is extremely easy. All you have to do is just move a bunch of files because all it is, in the end, um, the entire modern framework solution is just a bunch of, it's just a JavaScript file. The entire single page application is just sits in a single file. So that will be migrated by using any migration tool available on the market. I can also just drag and drop this file literally and it will also work. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, I think we will wrap this up for today. Again, uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, there was a lot there. So if people do have uh, follow-on questions, uh, we would encourage them to uh, reach out to us at Point Alliance. Uh, from a technical perspective, you are more than welcome to reach out to Dennis M at pointalliance.com, uh, or if it is more a sales or services question of how we may assist you, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me at jhamilton at pointalliance.com. So thank you again, everyone, for your time today. And uh, Dennis, did you have any parting words? Yeah, um, thank you everyone for attending the presentation. I will upload the PowerPoint presentation to our um, pointalliance.com website, where you will be able to click on the links to explore the topics I was talking about. Thank you again, everyone, and have a great day.